On the morning of February 5th, 2016, employees of the Hollywood Presbyterian Medical Center found their computers locked and frozen. As they tried anxiously to access their systems, a message appeared instructing them to send payment in the amount of $17,000 to an anonymous Bitcoin wallet. As a medical institution, with patient lives at stake, they felt compelled to pay the ransom and restore their access. March 22, 2018, employees of the municipality of Atlanta found themselves unable to access their online bill payment and court records systems. Attackers demanded a ransom of $51,000. The municipality refused to pay the demand and the resulting damages were estimated to be between $2.5 million to $10 million. September 25, 2018, ransomware struck the port of San Diego. While ships and boat traffic were unaffected, the ransomware shut down IT systems that managed park permits, public record requests, and the administration of other business services. These are just some of the attacks that have caused institutions across the United States and around the world to lose tens of millions of dollars. One variant of this ransomware, known as SenSem, was deployed in 2015 and hit critical infrastructure, including municipalities and hospitals. Like other types of ransomware, SenSem encrypted files on users' computers, preventing the victims from accessing or using data and demanding a ransom to restore access. These ransom demands range from hundreds of dollars to tens of thousands of dollars and are always requested in Bitcoin. SenSem ransomware infiltrated and affected more than 200 victims. One variant struck municipalities, hospitals, healthcare institutions, schools, and even critical infrastructure, generating $6 million in Bitcoin ransom payments and leading to roughly $30 million in damages for the affected victims. It's important to note that as a computer malware, SenSem became a popular tool modified by cyber criminals to target specific hosts. SenSem ransomware is sophisticated because these attacks do not rely on phishing emails, social engineering, or traditional malware attacks to gain access to a target system. Instead, they scoped out high-value targets and then took advantage of weak passwords. Once they've gained access, the attackers undertake reconnaissance, sometimes for weeks before choosing which computer to target for encryption. Most of the time, the hackers would attack at night, when the targeted organization is poorly equipped to deal with intrusion. Since Sam's code is also updated frequently to avoid antivirus detection and other endpoint defenses. 
Attackers give a deadline to pay the ransom and frequently set a time frame of a few days to a week to comply. With sophisticated attacks, file backups are also targeted and deleted before the encryption process is initiated. Surveillance tools are employed to gather information about the breadth of the network, the value of the data, and the value of business critical files that could be encrypted for ransom. The attackers then use freely available hacking tools against the selected computers to steal passwords. When a target is identified for infiltration, the ransomware is loaded into one initial computer and then executed to infect all of the target computers accessible in the network. Two Iranian men are wanted for their alleged roles in the creation and deployment of a sophisticated militia software that caused more than $30 million in losses to more than 200 victim hospitals, schools and other entities. One strange feature of the Sam Sam attacks is the use of the phrase, I'm sorry. In a coherent fashion, they also refer to their odd code of honor and attempt to substantiate their reliability and honesty. Twelve of these attacks were linked to Iranian nationals acting from Iran. These two individuals were believed to be behind the original deployment of one variant of SEMSEM. Despite unfounded suggestions, it appears that these two criminals have no ties to the Iranian government. Also, by 2015, state-sponsored attacks were reduced dramatically as a result of the Obama administration's lifting of sanctions against Iran in exchange for a promise to halt development of the country's nuclear weapons program. Regardless of whether the Iranian nationals were operating on their own or in collusion with the Iranian government, it's unlikely to expect any support from the Iranian government when it comes to arresting and prosecuting the individuals involved. Also, the United States does not have an extradition treaty with Iran, and therefore it's extremely unlikely that the attackers will ever be held accountable. In the analysis of the attack, it appears that because the ransom was paid in Bitcoin, the criminals needed to convert the Bitcoin into fiat currency. This was facilitated by two Iranian cryptocurrency exchangers. For the first time in history, the US Office of Foreign Assets Control decided to add two Bitcoin addresses to their comprehensive sanction list. Through an exclusive interview, the first trader pledged his innocence. He claimed that if he were doing criminal activity by himself, he would have gone to more trouble to hide his identity, pointing out that all his information is publicly available on his website. The website of the second trader is currently unavailable. However, it appears to be still active on social media. Despite the absence of a website, the company of the second trader can be traced back to the platform Local Bitcoin, a Helsinki-based peer-to-peer exchange, where the trader maintains a very high level of trust and positive feedbacks. Finally, how can organizations protect themselves against these types of attacks? Firstly, we want to discourage the attack from happening in the first place. This requires increasing cyber hygiene practices within organizations. By training employees to exercise caution with email attachments and links, network segmentation, and keeping critical computers isolated from the network, a simple firewall should be established. Ransomware is usually spread through emails and social engineering. This highlights the importance of training employees in cyber awareness. By regularly updating security updates, risks can be reduced and vulnerabilities 
prevent it from propagating. Utilizing intrusion detection systems can provide an early stage detection of anomalies within a network that could point to an attempt at a system compromise. If an attack is detected in its early stages, the malware can be removed relatively easily. Keeping fail-safe backups in a cloud-based system or off-site is an essential part of modern data integrity protection, which in turn can mitigate the risk of damage from a ransomware attack.